there's a 5% chance that I'm in focus and in frame. That's a good enough chance for me. We'll go with those numbers. Today's video is about map boxes. And do you need a map box? Do you not need a map box? Well, Freewell just came out with this Iger map box, which is a direct competitor to the Tilta Mirage map box, which I'm a big fan of, and the Polar Pro Base Camp map box, which I, I'm not necessarily not a fan of it. I just think it's overpriced. So where does this Freewell one fit into this mix? Well, first we got to talk about map boxes. Do you need one? Why would you need one? I think we all know the main reason is because it makes your camera look so much cooler if you have a map box. Let's be honest, that, that looks cool. With a camera like this, you can go to the client, you can charge $10,000. This camera, you can only charge $3,000 for a shoot with this camera. Facts, those are facts right there. You just gotta slap a matte box on here and you instantly can charge more money for your videos. It's true. Wow, I just made $7,000. most important reason to get a map box. That's reason number one. But reasons aside from that, a map box, what it does is it controls light from hitting your lens. So for example, if light's coming in and hitting your lens, it's gonna create unwanted flares, you're gonna lose contrast. You use your map box, kind of like a little shade. You know, this is a shade. It keeps the stray light from hitting where you don't want it to hit, but you can still shoot and have a subject backlit and kind of use this as sort of a, an eyebrow or a flag, if you will. So that's one reason why you would use a matte box to kind of keep stray light out of your lens when you're filming uh, directly into the sun. That's, that's reason number one. And that alone is why people have used matte boxes most of the time. People use a variable ND filter, which kind of brings us to our next problem. If you're using a matte box like this and you have a screw on ND filter, there's no way to be able to adjust your ND filter that's in there. You just, you can't do it. So, and everybody's come up with their own solution or version to that is this right here. You get, oh, look at this. It's a variable ND filter that's proprietary and it goes right here into the map box. Right here, just like so. Boom, we're in. Now we've got this little knob job. Knob job? Well, whatever. And we've got a one to five stop ND filter built into our matte box. We keep the stray light out and we can control exposure with an ND while still keeping our lens wide open if that's what we want to do. All right, so it's all magnetic, right? So this is your one to five stop ND. This is a circular polarizer. That's how you make a variable ND. So you can just use this alone and you'd have a polarizer. So now you've got the stray light, you've got a polarizer. You slap your one to five stop ND right here and it's magnetic. Let me just line it up correctly so it fits in there nicely. Boom. Magnet. It's on there. Now I've got a variable ND. You can also, let me swing this around here where you can maybe see it. So in here, this is magnetic as well. Let me just show you. Let's say you want a mist filter. So this is Freewell's one quarter snow mist filter. It's done. It's on. Magnetic. It's not going anywhere. Now you put this guy right here behind it, you've got an ND, you've got a mist filter. So what makes this different than the other ones? Well, price is a big a big difference. Get that down there. Price is a, a big difference. The Polar Pro still is way more expensive. I don't know the exact price of this one. It comes with different kits on how you want it. You can just get the matte box. You get the matte box with the ND. You can get it with the mist filter. You have a lot of options kit wise. This is still cheaper than the Polar Pro, even as a kit. And I believe, don't quote me on this, but it's a little bit more expensive than the Tilta, the Tilta Mirage, which it kind of falls somewhere in the middle. It, it, I'd say quality wise, it, it's gonna be right up there. They're all, all pretty good quality. I still think it's a matter of preference. I like Freewell filters. I've had really good luck with them. All of my screw on ND filters are Freewell and, and I like them a lot. They're really good filters. Okay, next thing you may wonder about this guy is will it fit on my lens? You know, the front of my lens is different. Well, yes, it will. We got this guy right here. So this, these are adapter rings, 67, 72, 82, 77. How do they work, you wonder? Let me just show you how this works. So we'll pull this off. So here's your matte box. It's got our filters and everything in it. This is the, the adapter ring. 
So this adapter ring is an 82 millimeter adapter ring. Yeah, this is a 72 millimeter lens. And what I have on here is a step up ring from 72 to 82. And then on top of that, because this is a red Komodo, as you might be able to tell, and it's notorious for bad IR pollution, I have an IR cut filter on here. I made another video about how important these are. I'll put a link to it up in the corner there. But you need an IR cut filter on, if you have a red Komodo for sure. Not, I'm not sure about the Komodo X, but I know for this one you need it. And a lot of the Blackmagic cameras you need it. I'm filming this currently on a Blackmagic 6K Pro and I don't have anything on it, so fingers crossed. Here we are on the red Komodo. Now I can tell just by looking at the monitor on top that my shirt has got a red tint to it. So this ND filter does not cut the infrared light like I was hoping. It's not an IR cut filter at all. So you can see on the Sony footage, and I can put a little bit of it side by side here, I'm wearing the same shirt, how it doesn't have the same IR pollution. It's more of a red sensor issue and it's not as much of an issue with the uh, the filters but you know I thought these filters had some IR uh, cutting sort of capability but I guess not we've now got the IR cut filter on there with this Freewell uh, Iger matte box now I got to tell you the matte box itself I like the quality I like that it's lightweight it's very simple easy to pack um, I like the control knob on it to adjust the ND. I like it a lot better than the one that's on the on the Tilto one. It's just a little bit bigger, easier to find. Just my personal preference. Where would a matte box like this not be useful to you? Well, I can tell you, I have seen people who are going with rule number one, which the most important thing is to look cool. And they're using a matte box for that reason only. And it's not really the right tool for the job. So what I've seen them doing is they're at an event that's very run and gun shooting with a matte box, but they're shooting with primes or with a 70 to 200 and a, you know, a 16 to 35 of the two lenses. And they're constantly having to take the matte box off, change the step up ring, switch it back and forth and filters. And they're doing this at an event, like standing in a corner or on a sideline. That is not what a matte box is for. I would say if you're gonna stay with one lens and you don't have to switch, you're probably fine with a matte box with your variable ND. If you're someone who's switching constantly lenses, a matte box isn't gonna work for you. It's just not, not the right tool. I would go with the screw on uh, filters if that was the case. That's just me. Again, this matte box is a very good one. I could say it's very recommended. It's very lightweight. It would work fine on a gimbal. It doesn't, doesn't add anything, even with the filters. They're all nice, good quality filters, good glass. I have really nothing negative to say about this, this product. It's very good, it's priced fairly, and it does the job. And it makes your camera look cool. Like, a lot cooler, doesn't it? That's really the main reason that you're considering buying a matte box, so. <sighs> That's all I got for you today. I'm glad I did this. We'll talk to you later. If uh, you like this video, you know, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, I really do not care.